big hit on McGill. Now Grover got slugged by Belfort. Ronick a break away the other way. Ronick in a long shoot. A goal! Jeremy Ronick. Here's Bork. He missed. Rebound. And Law comes up with a sensational save. Long stops him. Closing in. Takes a shot. He scores! Ray Bork putting a high one in. Welcome to Classic Series here on the NHL Network. I'm Dan Pollard. Today we take a look at a pair of 1992 division finals, exclusively involving original six teams. The Chicago Blackhawks met the Detroit Red Wings, facing off to decide the Norris champion, while in the Adams division, the Bruins and the Montreal Canadiens renewed their rivalry for the ninth straight year in the postseason. Boston and Montreal had a playoff history that dated back to 1929 and spanned an NHL record 24 series. The Canadians had enjoyed the vast majority of the success, having won 18 straight series from 1943 until 1988. Since that time, however, the Bruins had won three of the four series, leading up to their meeting in 1992. Heading into Game 1 at the Forum, fatigue was expected to be a factor, because both teams were coming off Game 7 victories in the opening round. Mo got to the net. LeBeau in there very quickly. It's knocked down at the line. Here's a big save by Mo on that shot, labeled by Denny Savard. Here's Juno setting one up. Bruins move up. Score! Shot by Gord Hines, beating Patrick Waugh. And the Bruins take the early lead. John, you had to figure that the first goal for either club would be important in this game, the way they play defense. Shot it for Roll the shot and won't stop that again. Close call. It's still 1-0 Boston. Then it was too late. Bruins on it again. Two of them. Leach and Reed. Leach scores! A bullet shot by Steve Leach. And it's 2-0 Boston. Short side on Patrick Wong. You can tell from his expression, although it was a rocket from Steve Leach, that Patrick felt he should have had that one. Bork chased him. Gilchrist open in the corner, turning for the goal. Gilchrist finds it back. Hill shot. The goal! Hill gets the goal! Here's Sean Hill, the American. His first game at the forum, his third chip, his first shot, his first goal. Nyland and McPhee, Keen. For Nyland, drill the shot. Here's Desjardins, can't shoot it. Another chance, scores! Desjardins ties it for Montreal. Big rebound, though. Canadians were there to clear the zone. Hines takes a screen shot. He scores! Hines took the shot, and I think Pullen at the of the crease, tipped it. Look at Pat Burns shaking his head. And they're giving it to Dave Poole, and he was close enough. He was in the area. And the Canadians, Daniel, failed to get it by Bork. Kept in, Juno scores! Boston opens up a 4-2 lead with a power play goal. Bob, the key word you said were Daniel fails to get it by Bork. Savard was forechecking. Dion saw him in there with LeBeau. Here's Savard, turning away from Leach. Savard comes out in front of the net. Denny Savard! A beautiful effort. This might give the Canadians the lift they need. Denny Savard out of the corner, and look at Steve Leach. He doesn't get the angle on Savard, and Savard hooks it off the inside of his stick and beats Andy Moe. Now watch Leach. He doesn't reach around with his right hand, and that allows the bar time to get out. And look at him just hook it through Andy Moe. His second of the playoffs. Adam Oates trying to get in there. He's in. Got in a little too far. Couldn't make a play. Another penalty being called against Montreal. Here's a shot. Scorer! Patrick Waugh did not move. He was flat-footed on the shot by Leach.
And you hear the fans are hollering for Rasico. That's tough to believe. Andre Rasico became the Canadiens' backup goaltender this year after a season-ending injury hit Roli Malasa. He played in nine games. His playoff experience amounts to 12 minutes total through two games in the Buffalo Montreal series a year ago. It's back to Bork. Now Juno and went through his skates. Schneider again, tied up, can't move it out. Here's Ray Bork getting a shot. Rasico to save. Here we started the period. We saw Pat Burns talking to Patrick Waugh. And now it looks like Patrick Waugh is going back in. And this is Pat Burns is changing goaltenders. Andre Rasco goes to the bench and out comes Patrick Waugh. All right, explain that one. Uh, Pat Burns is showing the fans, hey, he's my guy. You want to boo him, I'll show you. I'll pull him for one shift and send him back out there. And Patrick's the kind of player that can take that. A leading five to three. Rasco had made one save. Here's Bork. He missed. Rebound. And Waugh! comes up with a sensational save on that rebound and the shot from close in. He reached up and grabbed it with his left hand. Hines gave it to him. Canadians break it up. Scrudeland is on the move and he's got a break. Coming in with McPhee. Oh, the save. He scores. McPhee scoring for Montreal. One twenty left. We're going to be able to do that in this building. Dave Reed led the way with three assists as the Bruins exploded for six goals and ended their six-game winless streak at the Forum. Game two would follow a different script, however. This time, the goaltenders would shine, and the Bruins would have to play catch-up to force overtime. Moving up to the right side. A little too far, but here's Delphi stealing it. He's going in. Shot away. McPhee left it in the corner. He nailed Rosichka. There's Cortnell. Back to the line. They turn that shot. Oh! Canadians get the first one. A shot by Desjardins. The Bruins get it in there. Lazaro came close. Now he sent it to Gura's going in. Oh, he missed the open side. Sent it again. They score. That sticks went up. The puck did not go in. It did not go in the net. And the crowd responds. The Bruins thought they had it in. It sure looked like it. It looked as if it hit Patrick and got him behind him. But it stayed outside and squeezed by that near post. Now watch. Here's our special camera. We'll get a good look at it. Kevin Holler tips it. Look at Patrick. Comes across. Gets a lateral movement. And keeps it out. Oh, boy. And here's Nylon taking the pass. Stopped by Moog. Island takes it back of the net. Can't center it. Dion might. He does! Moog makes a big stop and there's a penalty. Mauer took the shot. He was stopped by Moog and then was dumped heavily. And here's another Boston penalty coming up. Boston pressing on this power play now. Good pressure right in front of the net. Goal! You could almost tell it was coming. The Bruins were all parked in front of Patrick Waugh. And they score with 58 seconds left in the period and tie it up. Four Canadians race away as the Bruins were changing. Eric Desjardins. Nice play for Corson. The backhander missed. Here's Schneider. Moog stopped it. Rebound. Score! Canadians lead 2-1. on it again. Trying to center it. Once more, Poulin. Up front, quick. What a save by Waugh. There's a game saver by Patrick Waugh on the shot by Reed. Donato is back in the play. Going back of the Canadian's goal. Can't center it. He's tied up. It's a face goal. Poulin got the quick pass out. And the Bruins, being very patient, do find that big break. And they tie it. What a great chance for Boston. Now, a breakaway, Savard. Can he do it for Montreal? No, Moog stops him. Denny Savard at the end of a long shift. Just couldn't get up the steam to crank it in and prevent probably 
A scoring play for Boston. They're in again. Juno! Right in! Oh, what a save by Waugh! I'll tell you, folks, that was one huge save. The Bruins want to win this one at the Forum tonight. They're in again. Boston coming close. Score! Doris scores for the Boston Bruins. And they take a 2-0 lead in this Adams final. Peter Duras put into this game for defensive purposes became an instant hero as he scored a 3-12 of the first overtime period to give Boston a commanding lead in this series 2-0. I was just heading to the net and uh, I think it was Poole and it, or yeah it was Poole and it uh, flipped it over and it was in the air and it just kind of jumped off of me and in, and in behind Wa. Wow, I didn't really get a chance to see where it was hitting. I was trying to get a swipe at it with my stick and uh, it ended up going in that direction. Just before Duras's goal, Denny Savard had a chance on this breakaway to end it all in the Canadian's favor, but he couldn't get the puck past Andy Moog. Well, it was uh, the end of the shift and I was a little tired there, you know, and uh, you know, I saw Andy Moog go down and I was just trying to slip the puck under him and, uh, you know, I puck rolled a little bit and, you know, he made a good save. This was a game where neither team seemed willing to open it up for fear of making a mistake. Ironically, it was turnovers in the offensive zone that led to most of the goals, like this Eric Desjardins slip-up where Ted Donato picks up a loose puck, feeds to Duras, who catches Dave Poulin to tie the game at 2-2. Don't look uh, behind us, don't look in the past. I think uh, it's a new series. It's the going in Boston. Uh, don't have any choice now. We have to win uh, the both games, and uh, that's what we, we're going to do. The victory was a costly one for the Bruins, who lost Raymond Bork with a hand injury for most of the third period and well into the overtime. I got slashed in the third period and I hurt my hands, so uh, I'm going to see a specialist tomorrow and see what's going on. How does it feel right now? Well, I mean, if I don't go, I didn't go back out it's because it's sore, but uh, hopefully uh, things won't be too serious and I'll be back. Ahead of the show, up two games to nothing, the scene shifts to Boston. For the Canadians strike first, for the Bruins answer, and ultimately game three is decided by a single goal. Ladies and gentlemen, the Canadian made Corolla. A little bit of entry with no key. A little empty tree gave a bill of tea. A little bit of drum space for your toys. A little more glass to reduce the noise. A little more sporty cause it's fun. A little more roof lifts in the sun. A little bit Now get 0% financing on the 2010 Corolla and other select models. This is it. We just need eight yards. Eight yards. Come on. We can do it for the team, for the kids, for the next generation, for the future of the planet. Ready? For your lawn, your garden, and your home, you'll now find over 50 Rona Eco products that respect the environment at every stage of their life cycle. Wow. What a ground game. Rona. Doing it right. We've waited three years for this group of hockey legends to return to the ice. Brett Hall, Brian Leach, Luke Robitaille, Steve Iserman, and Lou Lamorello. Join the Hockey Hall of Fame's newest inductees at the 2009 Source for Sports Hockey Hall of Fame Legends Classic. Sunday, November 8th at the Air Canada Centre. Featuring the pregame induction blazer ceremony, Canada Legends vs. World Legends, and a live halftime concert. Tickets available at TicketmasterHHOF.com or at the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto. Get your induction Sunday ticket today.
was upset by the wide open game that his team played in the overtime period of game two. He says that his club is ill-equipped to get into gung-ho offensive hockey and then hope to switch gears back to their defensive ways. There's a breakdown that happens. When the breakdown happens, uh, the problem is a lot of guys don't know how to adjust to that because they're used to playing a certain style of hockey. And when, when a breakdown in the, in, the, in, the, in, in the defensive part of the game happens, well, then the result is, is you, everybody's can, you know, saying that we're boring hockey. I'd rather be boring and win than be exciting and lose. Boston is in the driver's seat with their two-game lead. But the Canadians feel that they can come back. They've had success this year at the Boston Garden. But to do that, Burns wants his players shooting the puck at the net and then going for it. No more cutesy back passes and dipsy doodle moves. And the little fancy little pass around the net's not going to work now. I think the defensemen are minded to take that away from you. And we're trying to do that. We're trying to dipsy doodle and, and, uh, and trying to make that last fancy little play before we get to the net. And it's not getting there, and that's why we're not scoring. Canadians produced this interesting statistic today. Apparently 14 times in their history, they've been trailing 2-0 in a series. And on four of those occasions, they came back to win it. The last time was in 1987 against the Quebec Nordiques. Michael Whalen, TSN in Montreal. The Bruins had shocked the Canadians by sweeping the opening two games at the Forum. Now, despite having their confidence shaken, Montreal remained upbeat. They had overcome such a deficit back in 1987 after losing the first two games at the Forum against the Quebec Nordique. And they intended to do the same against the rival Bruins. But any thoughts of a comeback began with a win in Game 3 in Boston. Juno, he's a good hockey player, weaved away from Orson that lost it. And now the Canadians coming in. Keen shot, scores! Keen shot off the far post. And the Canadians get the first goal of the game, one minute and 32 seconds in. Here's Andy Moe. He gives Keen a little too much room. And look at the shot off the post and in. Waiting for help. Finds it now with Wesley shooting an easy one for Wall. It comes up front and Patrick Wall covers up again. Going back, they score! The Bruins have tied it. The play is here, Oates right around the net, but look at Murray. He just out muscles Eric Desjardins, gets that rebound. Now watch Poulin hits Haller. Now watch Dave Reed and Keen. Here comes Keen after Reed. And watch Reed, the little jab by Keen. And in <laughs> comes Peter Durst. Look out. Watch it. Keen was ducked. Boy, this place is jumping tonight. Pat Burns is upset, and I know they're upset. One of the reasons, not only the four-minute penalty to Keene, the only player in the box as a result of that, but Glenn Wesley climbed all over somebody. I think it was Gilbert Dion in the middle of that. Down to one, and only 10 seconds left in the period. Lazichka, one more rush coming up there. Can't get a handle on He scores! Wow! Four seconds left in the period, and a big break for Boston. Is still loose in there. Bruins press six goal. Weaver. Three one Boston. Here's a hit. JJ Daniel and Dave Poulin. And here comes Mike McPhee. Double trouble for Dave Poulin. Stopped dead in his tracks. Couldn't move on it. Schneider brings it up to the line and goes in. Bang on it, got another chance, scramble, score! It was slapped high by Denny Savard. And the Canadians finally break through on a power play. Eight seconds remaining, team shot it, round in front, four seconds, Bruins win it. Bruins go up three, nothing in the series. Look out. Lots of traffic in front of Andy Moog, and that's what started all this.
Gord Murphy and Shane Corson might be the main participants. I was watching along the boards. Bob Sweeney and Matthew Schneider looked as though they might get into it. Sweeney then just laughed at Schneider and pointed up to the clock. Fans throwing things down in that area. Dave Poole is trying to get his goaltender off the ice because Andy Moog already has been ejected from one game. Well, I tell you, John, these fans are loud all right, and well, they should be. I mean, I don't think too many people thought the Bruins were going to be a wrap without Raymond Bork, but they've done very well. And no matter what Pat Burns has tried, his Canadians just cannot fathom what the Bruins have thrown at them. Ahead of the show, up 3-0 in the series, the Bruins have a chance to become the first team to sweep the Canadians in 40 years. Well, in the Norris final, two other original six rivals battle in their division final. CyberClean, the revolutionary cleaning compound for high-tech equipment. Deep clean all your electronics with ease. CyberClean removes dust and debris on contact. Just press it on and the dirt is gone. The science of clean is CyberClean. In the war between fun and practicality, there are victims and there are victors. To the victor. The Dairy Queen Sweet Deals value menu has nine items to choose from. Any two for four dollars, any three for five, and any four for six. So I can choose from over 20,000 meal combinations! I'm gonna need a bigger tray. DQ Sweet Deals. What's your deal? Experience even more protection with chip and pin technology on your Visa card. It has a microchip that is virtually impossible to duplicate and a pin instead of a signature for added protection. Chip and pin technology coming soon to your Visa card. More people go with Visa. Let's say you're this dot in a world of many other dots. You've seen things, done things, experienced the world and found your place in it. Where do you move on to next? Up to where your friends are to share with them the stories that brought you here. Over a Guinness. Guinness, it's ready for you. Stunning fashion, Montreal now trailed 3-0 in the series. The biggest question heading into Game 4 at the Boston Garden was whether or not the Bruins would become the first team in 40 years and the second team ever to sweep the storied Canadians in a best-of-seven series. They say that this is the house that Shore built. As per Yankee Stadium, the house that Ruth built it. Pullen coming in on the right side. Pullen driving for the net. Center net! Oh, makes a great save! As the Bruins come close to getting the first goal, but that's a big save for the Canadians, Patrick Roy. Matthew Schneider on Jeff Lazaro right there. Canadians have played very aggressively here early on in the first period. Barely on side, breakaway. Gilchrist, Wesley trying to catch him. Moog stops him. He'll have to skate hard. The Bruins on the outside pass it around. It is Reed centering it. Shot. Lost it. Score! Boston scores. And a great pass 
save off Eric Desjardins' shot. Here's the play that leads to the good save by Moog and the penalty call on Dave Poulin, who is there, and Gord Murphy nails him up and over, and the crowd went nuts when it's it. Ending for the Montreal Canadiens. Yes, it's going to be Peter Doris. Empty net, over! And it's going to take quite a while. 4.8 seconds in this one. This ice is totally littered, mainly with brooms and whisks and all of that for the sweep. And of course, the picture tells the story at the other end. And Pat Burns in behind the Canadian's bench knows that the media vultures are circling even lower. And there's a guy who I can tell you late in the season, the media had him fired here in Boston. We mentioned the other night how there was a headline in a Boston paper about a month ago on the before the strike, and it was tick, 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 Rick. Well, Rick Bonus isn't in that position right now. Last time a team wearing a Montreal uniform was swept, they had players on that team like Horace Richard, Elmer Locke, Doug Harvey, pretty good hockey players. It happens. Three seconds left. It's over, folks. The Bruins in a sweep. Hold oh, in a shutout. The Canadians are gone, and the Bruins Move on. Big reason this lunch pail gang Bruins have swept the Montreal Canadiens has been the player of their goaltender, Andy Moog. The tone for this series was set when Boston's first shot on net in game one was a goal. Everything Montreal was supposed to do better than Boston, they didn't. First and foremost, goaltending. Patrick Waugh looked very mediocre and let in several weak goals. But there's no doubt that I didn't make the, the big saves for the guys. I didn't play a great game. I, was, uh, I wasn't sharp at all. I mean, I was fighting the puck a lot. Like last year, Andy Moog outplayed Wah, and when called upon, came through in the clutch. Uh, every single time we, we'd let up defensively, he was there. And uh, there's, no, there's no way you can underestimate the importance of having a goaltending like that in the playoffs. It just can carry you so far. In the checking department, the Bruins were far superior, not allowing the Habs entrance into the attacking zone at crucial times. You know, guys like Savard and, and Cordell will make some pretty spectacular plays if you give them some room out there. So we stuck to our guns and, and got in their face as much as we could and not, didn't give them the opportunity to make some plays. With the exception of game one, Montreal's offense was next to non-existent. When opportunities arose, the Habs squandered their chances in a variety of fashions. We just didn't seem to come up with the goals in, uh, in this series when, when we needed them. So, again, there's, you know, there's no sense making excuses. We, we didn't do it, and uh, now we're out. 1992 was a year many expected Montreal to make it out of the Adams uncontested. But even without the stars of the team, Boston adapted well and made the Canadians crack under pressure. There's a lot of pressure on us, and uh, we, we were not able to respond. Uh, you know, our passing and everything that we did was just uh, awful. After meeting in the playoffs for nine straight years, these two teams would not face each other in 1993, but they would renew their postseason rivalry in 1994. Once again, Boston would come out on top. In a strange twist of fate, from 1988 to 1995, the Bruins were the only Wales Conference team to eliminate the Canadians in the playoffs. Over in the Campbell Conference, the Chicago Blackhawks faced the Detroit Red Wings in the Norris Division Final. The Hawks advanced in six over the Blues in their opening round. At the same time, the Red Wings overcame a 3-1 series deficit to eliminate the Norris Stars. But many wondered if they would suffer a letdown in Game 1 against the Blackhawks. Constantina, rink wide for Steve Chason. His flip towards the net is held by Balfour. And then... Robert drives to the net and sends a Blackhawk player in on top of the Chicago goaltender. And that results in a crowd gathering back of the Blackhawk net. So Bob Probert is issuing a challenge to every Chicago Blackhawk player. And for the most part, he's managing to do it within the rules. Graham ahead for Sutter. Sutter going for the net. He shoots club save. Shevelday. In a couple of the eight shots the Detroit Red Wings had. Watch how Eiserman tries to sneak this one by in his backhand. And even though he's from a terrible angle, perhaps a year too early, but he wanted to get young guys in the lineup. 
and start to build a certain winning way and a philosophy of his own. And the only way to do that is to get new guys. Big hit on Balfour. And you can guess who's in the middle of that one. It is Bob Probert. The call is charging as he gets by Chelios and catches Balfour right there. Steve Smith on top of Probert. If you say, well, Balfour was fair game. Ronan. He's Kravchuk at the point. Back to Ronan. Noonan to Matoli scores! <laughs> Stefan Mato With Noonan, the initial shot. Stefan Mato grabbing the rebound off the shot by Noonan. A power play goal at 5.30 with Ronick also drawing an assist. It's 1-0 Chicago. Mateau ends up getting his third goal of the playoffs, and watch how he isn't right on top of Shevel Dave. Wide for McCrimmon. His shot goes off a leg wide. Sean Burr in the corner is checked. Miller back of the net. To the point. Racine with the shot. He Puck is perfectly placed as Racine wastes absolutely no time. And really dominate the series and end up advancing because of it. Nisebart would like to be the reason for that. Chelios going for the net. Chevalde with the save. Fine play by the Chicago defenseman as he split the defense and went in to get a shot away. Sutter shoots it in. Lemieux gets it. Scores off the end ball. Jocelyn Lemieux went racing in on the Sutter shoot-in and blew it past Chevalier. Brent Sutter positions it perfectly off the boards because he knows Lemieux has got a full head of steam. Talked about pressure and containment at the start of this game. We're seeing it now. Face on with a shot. Balfour will hold it for a face-off with 2.25 remaining. And the Hawks protecting a one-goal lead. Balfour has faced 24 shots and a couple of crucial ones right at the end of the hockey game. He had trouble locating the puck. There was a lot of traffic in front of him, but he ended up stopping everything that came to him. Right there, a little bit of help to the line and up. This one is going to end with the Blackhawks scoring a road win as the puck is dumped down the ice. 2-1 will be the final score. And an opening game Norris win for Chicago. Bob Probert and Dirk Graham exchanging some words as the horn sounded to end the hockey game. And then Chris Chelio skated up to say something as the Blackhawk players now congratulate goalie Ed Belfort. Ahead of the show, having stolen the opener, the Blackhawks start fast in game two, hoping to complete the sweep in Detroit. Pittsburgh fans, your Penguins are the 2009 Stanley Cup champions. Call now or log on to shop.nhl.com to get the official locker room hat and t-shirt worn during their post-game celebration. You can also get the DVD celebrating their incredible season and a limited edition puck. To save 10% on this entire championship package, call 877-CUP-2077 now. And for the largest collection of championship merchandise, including official locker room celebration items, log on to shop.nhl.com. The Penguins are the Stanley Cup champions. Call now and order today. New Bud Light Lime. The easy drinking taste of Bud Light with a splash of 100% natural lime flavor. Bud Light Lime, now available in Canada. CyberClean, the miracle cleaning compound for car interiors. Deep clean those hard to reach spots with ease, leaving no streaks or residue. Just press it on and the dirt is gone. The science of clean is CyberClean. In the war between fun and practicality, there are victims, and there are victors. To the victor, go the spoils. All new, all that, Master 3. all year.
here for this. The Keg's Lobster Summer is back. Indulge until August 23rd. Play Source Superfruit with only 35 calories. Add a little flavor to your life. Find your source. We've waited three years for this group of hockey legends to return to the ice. Brett Hall, Brian Leach, Luke Robitaille, Steve Iserman, and Lou Lamorello. Join the Hockey Hall of Fame's newest inductees at the 2009 Source for Sports Hockey Hall of Fame Legends Classic. Sunday, November 8th at the Air Canada Centre. Featuring the pre-game induction blazer ceremony, Canada Legends vs. World Legends, and a live halftime concert. Tickets available at Ticketmaster, HHOF.com, or at the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto. Get your induction Sunday ticket today. Jocelyn Lemieux's third period goal had been the difference in the Blackhawks' 2 1 win. While the victory had swung home ice advantage in Chicago's favor, the Red Wings remained confident. They had lost the opener in their first round series and fallen behind 3 1 before rallying to advance. They intended to have recent history repeat itself beginning in game two. Over the Hawk line, it chased on and lost it. Here's Ronick, a breakaway the other way. Ronick in a long shoot. He scores! Jeremy Ronick pulled it to the back. And flipped it by Chevalier toward the stick side. One to nothing, Hawks at the 107 mark. Picked off by Ronick, who had tried to hit Miller along the far boards, missed him, was coming back late, picked it off, took off, faked, went to the back end, and put it upstairs. Chevalier was defenseless. Isaac flipped it ahead. Chelios broke it up, and Isabart kicked it back into the Hawks zone. Isabart cutting in. He's hooked down. There'll be a penalty. The Hawks had to take that penalty. Steve Smith took him to the ice, but the Red Wings keep it in. McGill centered it. Shepard couldn't pull it to the floor, and they centered it. Belfour, how did he make that save? And Belfour post to post with a terrific save. Back to center ice it goes on the stick of McCrimmon. Looking for Galan. He's wrapped up by Keith Brown, and now Prober got slugged by Belfour. Well, there you go. Ed Belfour was run over by Bob Prober. In game one, Belfort did not anticipate that hit, and in his first chance tonight, he just cold cocked it. The Detroit player Probert, and Probert didn't expect that at all. Belfort sees him come, and Probert goes tries to go through him, and Belfort elbows him. 40 minutes in penalties in the regular season. Probert gets an elbow in the face. And Greg Gilbert shoots it in there. Newton into the near corner after it. Got away from Eisenman, moves behind the wrapper on to Gilbert, he scores! Brian Noonan, I don't know if that was an intended pass or not, looked like he's going to make a wraparound, then it rolled away to Gilbert, who pounded it past Chevalier, but Noonan getting away from Eisenman, starting the sequence, it's two to nothing, Hawks. Races over the line, Ronick shooting, and it's blocked nicely, then Ronick got it back, tries the center one, deflecting into the air, Ronick chopped down, and he scores! Jeremy Ronick and Steve Larmer both took wax and a bouncing puck, and one of them powered it by Tim Chevalier. Three nothing Hawks. Oh, lucky break for the Blackhawks there. Puck bouncing all over. Very difficult to complete a play, but good hand eye coordination. And Larmer just beat Ronick to it. There's it into the Red Wing zone. Oh, the near side. Lemieux, a big hit on McGill. He had Bob McGill lined up and corked him. Held in by Larmer with a long shot and a save by Chevalier. Over to the far side, Keith Brown. Primo with a great hit on the Blackhawks, Keith Brown, but Bob McGill leveled. Trying to help the Hawks add to a 3 nothing lead, but a giveaway. Here's Burr with a backhander, Belfour. Big save there by Ed Belfour. And listen to the Red Wing faithful. They are getting all over this Detroit power play. Here's Fedorov over the Hawk line. Fedorov chipped it loose to Lindstrom. He's open, cutting in. Put it inside of the net to Eisman. Watch it open net. He scores. Steve Eisman walked out from the side of the goal, got around Belfour. There was no other red sweater in front of the net, and he tapped it into a wide open goal. Knox getting out of position. That's uh, often the case when players rush out of the penalty box to get involved. Lindstrom moves in. Chelios goes down on one knee. Eisman comes out. Belfour's down too early. The pass was picked off, and Lemieux. Gets it to Brent Sutter over the line, has Noonan on the move, and Sutter with a shot, and a save by Chevalier. Tim Chevalier again, well out of the net to challenge the shooter. There's the draw back into the Red Wing zone. Chason looks at the clock, 
And now it's official. The Hawks lead in the series two games to nothing. Tonight, a three to one victory over the Detroit Red Wings and Ed Belfour getting the deserved congratulations from his teammates and he and Steve Smith embrace and they are two of the biggest factors in this Blackhawk victory. Well, brilliant performances throughout the playoffs. Uh, Steve Smith spectacular tonight. Likewise, Chelios, but what a solid team effort. Great goaltending by Belfour at critical times. Late in the third, early in the first. Ahead of the show, trailing 2-0 in the series, the Red Wings fall behind early in Game 3 in Chicago, but rally from a pair of two-goal deficits to tie the score in the third period. Pittsburgh fans, your Penguins are the 2009 Stanley Cup champions. Call now or log on to shop.nhl.com to get the official locker room hat and t-shirt worn during their post-game celebration. You can also get the DVD celebrating their incredible season and a limited edition puck. To save 10% on this entire championship package, call 877-CUP-2077 now. And for the largest collection of championship merchandise, including official locker room celebration items, log on to shop.nhl.com. The Penguins are the Stanley Cup champions. Call now and order today. Ladies and gentlemen, the Canadian made Corolla. A little bit of entry with no key. A little MP3 capability. A little bit of drum space for your toys. A little more glass to reduce the noise. A little more sporty cause it's fun. A little more roofless in the sun. A little bit of better wiper blades. A little bit safer is how it's made. Now get 0% financing on the 2010 Corolla and other select models. I pick the home improvements, my husband gets to figure them out, eventually. The Home Renovation Tax Credit gives us a good reason to do it now. We could save up to $1,350 on home improvements purchased before February 2010. We just have to remember to keep our receipts for when we file our taxes. This envelope is great. Putting our tax dollars back into our home, that works for us. Canada's Economic Action Plan. Get started now at actionplan.gc.ca. A message from the Government of Canada. Experience even more protection with chip and pin technology on your Visa card. It has a microchip that is virtually impossible to duplicate and a pin instead of a signature for added protection. Chip and pin technology coming soon to your Visa card. More people go with Visa. Blackhawks had stunned the Red Wings by sweeping the opening two games in the Motor City, allowing a total of just two goals in the process. Detroit, however, drew confidence from their opening round victory when they overcame a 3-1 series deficit against the North Stars. The Wings hoped a change in scenery would change their fortunes in Game 3 and be the beginning of a comeback. Now on the near side, puck is cleared back to center right. Jeremy Roenick racing over the Red Wing line, moves into the slot, now the drive, he scores! Jeremy Roenick allowed to walk right into the middle of the ice and fired a wrist shot that Chevrolet got a piece of, but not enough. One to nothing, Hawks. A marvelous individual effort by Jeremy Roenick, and he's gone over to the bar. Andy Van Helen is looking at him, and to see the damage done, he's cut again. Meanwhile, at the other end, he got high stick, and uh, he was numbed, and Taken aback by it, but here they come again. Sauter over the Red Wing line. Got it in behind the goal. Now on the far point, Chelios holds it in. His shot deflecting. Here's Graham. He scores! Dirk Graham got a very fortunate bounce. Chelios' shot was blocked. It went right, right to a wide open Graham. Bang! Two to nothing, Hawks. And it's two nothing, Blackhawks. Two goals in 30 seconds. One on 801. And this one at 8.31. Chelios, nothing doing there, and Hudson starts Chicago back. 
Hits it into the Red Wing zone. Chase on. Gave it away to Noonan for Hudson all alone. He shoots. Big save, Shevelday. What a great save by Tim Shevelday. Hudson had all kinds of time right on the doorstep. And Shevelday keeps the Red Wings within a pair. Probert got away with two in that shift. Should have been penalties. Probert to the Hawk line. Tied up that is carried out a shot. They score! A backhand shot from Mike Sillinger through the legs of Ed Belfour. And the rookie Sillinger, the first pick of the Red Wings in 89, cuts the Hawk lead in half. Eisenman trying for Galan. It didn't get there. Larmer the steal has Ronick busting. Feeds him. Ronick is in. Here's the shot. Shevelday again shining in the Red Wing net. Uh, Shevelday with a couple of key saves, one on Larmer, and Ronick pulls it to his forehand this time and just shanked it wide. In a much needed power play situation. Lindstrom top of the ring along. Chris shot hits Steve Smith in front of the net. Coming to the near corner, Shepard out of there with it, shooting and a save by Bill Barima. They score! Ray Shepard picked up his own rebound and chopped it in, and the Red Wings on the power play have tied up this game in a deuce. Well, the rebound hit him. He went, he shot the puck, the rebound came back out. It hit him and deflected into the net past that Belfour. And Chelios at the near point. Now looking to center, it hit the skate of Peluso. Back to Chelios. Works into the near circle, cuts for the net, shoots, and a save rebound. They score! Chris Chilios picked up his own rebound. A solo effort from the Hawks star. And Chelios with a backhander puts the Hawks in front three to two. Now it's Lauer who joins Larmer and Ronick for this Hawk power play. And Chelios. It's it to Ronick shooting it in. Back of the net burr against Lauer. Lauer jammed it loose to Ronick looking for Larmer. Out to the line, Chelios. Moves it across to Smith, a long flip shot deflected to Larmer, he scores! The Red Wings got the shot block, but it went right to Steve Larmer, and then he pounded it up under the crossbar, four to two in favor of the Hawks. Well, there is great evidence of why you don't have to slap at 100 miles an hour from the blue line. But Smith gets it from Chelios, just flicks it towards the net, much of a lob, glove by Jason. Right to Larmer and he buries it in game five or uh, in the stadium in game five. And then here comes Eisenman around to check. He's in. Belmore! What a save rebound. Belmore stopped. Now they score. It trickled in on the rebound. I think the light is on. Van Helleman did not seem to be sure, but it is a goal. And the Red Wings have scored in the first minute of the third. And now they trail just four to three. Well, Steve Eisenman undresses the Blackhawk defenseman. Now Shepard. Got it to Jimmy Carson. In over the Hawk line. Fires! He just missed the top corner with that. Carson, his own rebound. Center to Shepard. He scores! Ray Shepard all alone in front of the net. Two goals in the first two minutes of the third period. The Wings have caught the Hawks at four. Confusion. Mass confusion this whole shift for the Blackhawks. A 4-4 hockey game as the Red Wings battle back. Flipped it into the Red Wings zone. Graham on the far side, shot it into the near corner, Hudson. Max had it, then Kravchuk, a shot, they score! Dirk Graham tipped it in! Kravchuk, a long shot, was tipped in by the Hawk captain, has the start of Tim Shevelday, and with just under five minutes left in the third, the Hawks are back in front, 5-4. Well, Kravchuk makes up for that big blunder early in the period when Eisenman undressed them. He cuts his determined effort, he fought off two Red Wing players, enabling Kraftchuk to sneak in behind him and crank it up along the ice. Dirk Graham stuck in behind everyone and redirected it past a startled Tim Shevelday. Great reaction here by the Blackhawk bench. They're up and jubilation. Big goal. The Hawks with a one goal lead with just under five minutes remaining. Lindstrom in his own end. Shot it to center. Broken up by Chelios. To Larmer. He shot it in. Ahead of the show, the Blackhawks up 3-0 and trying to complete the sweep. Ed Belfour and Tim Shevelday duel with the series on the line in Game 4. This NHL Network program is brought to you by Bud Light. Bud Light is keeping the good times going around the NHL tonight. This is Matt. Last year, Matt went on the Bud Light Caribbean cruise. It was awesome. 
For four days and three nights, Matt soaked it all in. I had to ship up to like 100, 100 miles an hour. <laughs> For obvious reasons, we're protecting Matt's identity. I didn't invite my girlfriend. Sorry, Tracy. You're an idiot. Yeah. The Bud Light Caribbean Cruise. Four days, three nights, two ships, one unforgettable party. See BudLight.ca for details. Must be 21 years or older. No purchase necessary. The new JVC, a Vario memory card camcorder with dual SD card slots. One touch upload to YouTube and easy export to your iTunes library. The new colorful, a Vario memory card camcorders. The perfect experience. JVC. Play Source Super Fruit with only 35 calories. Add a little flavor to your life. Find your source. Up 3-0, the Blackhawks now had a stranglehold on the series. Dirk Graham's winner late in Game 3 had been especially demoralizing to the Wings and overshadowed the fact that Detroit had overcome a pair of two-goal deficits before tying the score in the third period. Dejected but not yet defeated, the Wings went into Game 4 looking to avoid their first sweep in 22 years, hoping to start a historic comeback. Well, oh, there's an interference, got away with it, was Graham on McGill. Oh, look, Bogut. Bogut's in. In front for Graham, they can get the shot away. Around the board, got? Who's got the penalty? Boy, Lemieux just drilled forward. He caught him off balance, and he went in dangerously. Head first, we don't know who the penalty's on. And here's the collision now. With Prober got caught off balance. The puck goes back in behind Shevelman. Case on, drives it up the board. The hot, but Toe was waiting there. This center pass brought they stuck down a couple of times. Still moves, and finally Chevrolet gets the whistle from Lecurie, and we've got Ronix here, Blackhawk. Ronix down, I think. But Ronix, the one that took the run behind the net. Here's the end of the play, though, after he was run over, and he's whacked pretty good by Konstantinov. Watch the run here. Bang. Here comes 27. Boom, into chase on. No damage there, but he took Electrum Konstantinov, boy, and he was trying to stuff him right there. Weiserman nearly had Sillinger breaking. It comes back into the red lane zone. Ronick drops it back. Grab! Save! Chevrolet, what a stop! And a clear by Lipster. Great save, that one. It sure was. Weiserman gets the loose puck. Weiserman goes up the boards for Federoff. 49 seconds left on the power play. Chase on drive. Go for the save! And no rebound. Better off complaining because Steve Smith stuck him with the stick. That he don't force us no way. Fourth year pro out of North Dakota where he played for a year. Across the line. Drops it back to Federoff. Federoff puts out the brakes. Top of the circle. Rips the shot. Save rebound. Third. And chase on. But a whistle stops the play. 7-10 to go in the second period. And Eddie Belfour stands tall. Now it comes loose. Jason needing some help. Goulet, back to the point. Chelio draws a shot. Save. Loose puck. Goulet, no. Oh, it's no. still not in yet. Oh, my goodness. Lima had a pop at it, and it hit the other goal post. McCreary vehemently waving his arms. No way. No way. And to my left, the video replay judges go to work. Holy smoke. Bill McCurry, no way he's saying it. Let's look at it. Chelio from the point. Holy mackerel. Here's the first save of the ball. was kicked right there. And who's that, Goulet? Oh, oh there right it is. Underneath yep. Shevelman. Underneath his left pad, his left arm, but well in front of the goal line. 
And Steve Larmer, I believe it was, with one arm. Look at this thing. Look at that. What a replay shot that is right across the front of the goal line. And then Larmer with one hand on the stick. Oh, Kibble had to make a save. Now Gilbert, Eisenbart, Racine, and Dirk Grant. Look out here. Look out, Gilbert! In front! Score! It's actually, it looks like Chase on stick. He made the defensive play and trying to get his stick back to him. Looked like it chipped the puck over to the right side of Chevrolet. And there was Brent Sutter. Watch this thing right there. Sutter just chips the backhander in, and this place goes nuts. Boy, look at the job that Gilbert did to stay out of the crease. Yeah. The wings appeared, though, that they were going to escape. Even though the Hawks had won the battle, and Federoff just yeah. overskated the it, puck. It came from a double bin again. The puck on this side came by shovel they were nice about it. Looked like he had uh, Gilbert all tied up and the puck went into the far corner. And when they came out of there, it's like Federoff got the puck. And as he went to move it, it hit Eisenberg's skate. And the Hawks came back towards the net. Well, the Red Wings have a minute and 34 left in their season. Unless they can pull something off here. It has to be a very bitter tasting pill for Brian Murray to have to swallow. He was quoted in the Detroit papers today saying, you know, if you told me back at the beginning of this season, we might be in the Norris Division Finals after winning the regular season championship against teams like Chicago and St. Louis that finished ahead of us a year ago. I would have thought that's a heck of a year, but of course, as he put it, you can't be satisfied falling short of a championship. The Hawks are going to the Campbell Conference Finals. The Hawks would extend their playoff winning streak to a record 11 games in 1992 before losing in the opening game of the Stanley Cup Final. For the Wings, this marked the first time since 1970, a span of 22 years, that Detroit had been swept in a series of any length. Ironically, it was the Blackhawks who did them in in that year in the quarterfinal. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. I'm Eric Stahl, and you're watching NHL Network. Eric Stahl hits the hole and finds it at the most opportune time. Stahl walks in for a chip. He scores! That's hockey, baby! NHL Network. This is my channel. It was, it was amazing. To top it off, JJ gave Brian this medal. Eli won an obedience contest in his absence. Oh, that is so awesome. All three are now best buds for life. I think we definitely will be staying in touch. Eli's part of the family now, and Brian and I became friends over, uh, over the course of this thing. That was a pretty fast dash to his owner, but not that fast. Here's the fastest mammal in the world, Sarah the Cheetah, at the Cincinnati Zoo, set the record yesterday, and then turned around and broke it. Again, the eight-year-old female ran 100 meters in 6.1 seconds in her second attempt. This is amazing to see. Cheetahs, yeah, they do like 100 kilometers an hour. So in the second attempt, 6.13 seconds. Unbelievable. A male cheetah from South Africa set the previous record of 6.19 seconds. The zoo says Sarah's record applies to zoos and other places that raise cheetahs, but they're thinking about submitting it to the Guinness people.
to make it official. Hopefully Sarah's not in the juice there. Hopefully there's not an embarrassing press conference later. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're back with our top stories and a news conference. We're waiting for that. We'll pick it up. We're, uh, we're hearing that Magna is the winner of Opal in Canada in the car business in a big way.